Good evening, brothers in Christ. In the previous lesson, we saw the end of the northern kingdom of Israel. Today, we are going to see the end of the southern kingdom of Judah in the book of 2 Chronicles chapters 33 through 36. Today's topic is Judah's path into exile. Let's pray together. Holy and righteous God, we thank you that we have received your righteousness by grace through faith in Jesus. Through today's lesson, teach us your righteousness that we may praise and exalt your righteousness throughout our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In our world today, we often see people coming out and claiming rights for themselves or for those they think are deserving justice. This is under the concept that everyone is righteous or justified in something. However, in the eyes of God, there's no one righteous, not even one. He alone is perfectly righteous in character and in all that he does. By grace through faith in God and in his son Jesus, God gives us his righteousness in place of our unrighteousness. We always have hope because his righteousness in us prevails over sin's destruction. Today's lesson has two sections. Section 1, Prevailing Through Perils. Section 2, Prevailing Through Promises. Please remember that God's righteousness prevails. The first section is Prevailing Through Perils. The first peril is the peril of rebellion. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 55 years. Instead of continuing with the reform of his father, King Hezekiah, Manasseh followed the detestable practices of the Canaanites, and he led the people to do the same. Manasseh allowed sin to invade his heart, which affected every decision he made. Manasseh had the longest reign as king. Unfortunately, he was one of the most wicked kings also. He rebuilt the high places, erected altars to the Baals, and made Asherah poles. He worshipped all the starry hosts. Furthermore, he built altars to all the starry hosts in the temple of the Lord, where people should worship God alone. He sacrificed his children in the fire, practiced divination and witchcraft, sought omens, and consulted mediums and spiritists. He led Judah and the people of Jerusalem astray. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they paid no attention because his love for sin was greater than his love for God. Manasseh did much evil in the eyes of the Lord, arousing his anger. The Lord therefore brought against Judah the army commanders of the king of Assyria. The army of Assyria took Manasseh prisoner, took a hook in his nose, bowed him with bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. In his distress, Manasseh humbled himself and prayed to God. God brought Manasseh to the end of himself so that he would see his need for God. 
the Lord was moved by his entreaty and listened to his plea. So he brought him back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord is God. What sin has blinded you to God's truth? Have you made a decision that is leading you away from God instead of to Him? Will you turn from your sin and turn back to God so that you will be able to see what is right and then do it? God's ways are always right. Manasseh was now a different man. He tried to undo all the wrong he had done, but consequences of his previously committed and repented sin still remained in his kingdom, which took time to restore. Even though he got rid of idols and restored the worshipping of the Lord, the people, however, continued to sacrifice at the high places, but only to the Lord their God. Misguided for so many years, the people worshipped God, but not God's right way. How do we do the same today? Are we going to church and yet worship other things in our hearts? The second pearl is the pearl of refusal. Ammon was 22 years old when he became king. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, as his father Manasseh had done. Ammon worshipped and offered sacrifices to all the idols Manasseh had made, but unlike his father Manasseh, he did not humble himself before the Lord. Even though Ammon refused to reform, God's righteousness prevailed. Ammon served as king for only two years before being murdered by his own officials in his home. Principle 1 God's righteousness prevails through unrighteousness leadership. Manasseh and Ammon chose self-rule over God's right ways. Self-rule is a lie from Satan that we can be our own God and our ways are best. Where in your life have you been deceived into thinking that your ways are better than God's? How would your life be different if God's righteousness prevailed in your heart? God's right ways are always best for nations, for leaders, and for people, including you and me. The second section is prevailing through promises. Let's look at prevailing through the promises of blessings first. Josiah was eight years old when he became king after Ammon, his father. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed the ways of his father David not turning aside to the light or the left. In the eighth year of his reign, Josiah began to seek the God of his father David. In his twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of high places, Asherah poles, and idols. Josiah scrubbed Judah and Jerusalem clean before going north to do the same in the cities previously ruled by the northern kingdom Israel. Josiah completely rid the land of idolatry. 
at this time in history. The prophets Sephania, Jeremiah, and Habakkuk served God as his voice to the people. Josiah sent Shaphan and Maaseah, the ruler of the city, with Joah, the recorder, to repair the temple of the Lord his God. They went to Hilkiah, the high priest, and gave him the money that had been brought into the temple of God, which the Levites, who were the gatekeepers, had collected from the remnant of Israel and from all the people of Judah and Benjamin. This money was distributed to the workers who repaired and restored the temple. One day, while they were bringing out the money that had been taken into the temple of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord that had been given through Moses. Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, who took the book to Josiah. After Shaphan reported on the temple progress, he read God's law to Josiah. This book could be either the whole Pentateuch, Genesis through Deuteronomy, or just major portions of Deuteronomy. When the king heard the words of the law, he tore his robes. This might be the first time Josiah had ever heard God's law, and hearing God's word had a drastic effect on Josiah. What impact does reading or hearing God's word have on you? Does it make you mad when your sin is exposed? Or does it cause you to rebel and want to do things your way? Let's be thankful to know what is right and best according to God. Righteousness is doing what is right, and only God is righteous. The problem is that we are incapable of producing the kind of righteousness that God requires. If we do what is right in the eyes of the world, our hearts long for things that do not please or honor God. God understands our limitations and our inability to be right. He therefore provided what we cannot through the perfect sacrifice of His Son, Jesus. When we place our faith in Jesus Christ, His perfect righteousness becomes ours. This does not mean we will not sin and that we can live right on our own. Instead, we understand just how much we do need God ruling in our hearts and in every part of our lives. Josiah knew God would keep his promise to punish those who disobeyed his law. In an effort, to know more about what was written in the book of the law, Josiah sent a team of officials to inquire of the Lord. The Lord answered through the prophet Haldah that because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before God when you heard what he spoke against this place and its people, and because you humbled yourself before me and tore your robes and wept in my presence, I have heard you, declares the Lord. Now I will gather you to your ancestors 
and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I am going to bring on this place and on those who live here. The king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple with the people. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant which had been found in the temple. Then he made all who were present in Israel serve the Lord their God. As long as he lived, they did not fail to follow the Lord, the God of their ancestors. In the fourteenth day of the first month, Josiah led the nation of Judah and Israel to celebrate Passover just as God commanded. The Passover was celebrated to remind the Jewish people that they were chosen by God through a covenant relationship to bring him glory. They were to look and act according to God's right ways. The Passover was reinstated and the temple was cleansed and ready for worship. When Josiah had set the temple in order, Necho, king of Egypt, went up, and Josiah marched out to meet him in battle. Necho sent messengers to him, saying that Necho was not attacking Judah at this time. Egyptians were then aligning with the Assyrians to battle the Babylonians. Necho asked Judah to stop opposing the Egyptian army. Josiah did not listen to what Necho had said at God's command, but went to fight him. Archers shot King Josiah. His officials brought him to Jerusalem where he died. Josiah's life is evidence that we must stay focused on God and fully rely on Him every day. We have seen God's righteousness prevailing through the promises of blessing. We are now looking at prevailing through the promises of judgment. The final four kings rejected God's right ways and did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Babylon's threat intensified as they became the leading world power. The prophets Jeremiah, Habakkuk, and Ezekiel spoke God's word to the people during that time. Josiah's youngest son, Jehoahaz was the first of these four kings. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for three months. The king of Egypt dethroned him and met Eliakim, a brother of Jehoahaz, king over Judah and Jerusalem, and changed Eliakim's name to Jehoiakim, but Necho took Eliakim's brother Jehoahaz and carried him off to Egypt. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem for 11 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord his God. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, attacked him and bowed him with bronze shackles to take him to Babylon. According to the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 1, it is likely that Daniel was one of the young men from Judah 
taken to Babylon. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for three months and ten days. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. King Nebuchadnezzar brought him to Babylon together with articles of value from the temple of the Lord, and he made Jehoiakim's uncle Zedekiah king over Judah and Jerusalem. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 11 years. Zedekiah did not listen to the prophet Jeremiah and rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar. Under Zedekiah's leadership, the people and the priests became more and more unfaithful, doing detestable things and defiling the temple. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, sent word to them through his messengers again and again, because he had pity on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked God's messengers, despite his words, and scoffed at his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord was aroused against his people, and there was no remedy. When God's promises of salvation are ignored, his promises of judgment will be fulfilled. God gave them, the people of Judah, into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. Jerusalem was brutally attacked. Young and old were killed. The temple was burned, and the city walls were smashed. The remaining Jewish remnant were taken to Babylon. Through disobedience, destruction, deportation, and exile, hope remained. The land enjoyed its Sabbath rests. All the time of its desolation, it rested until the 70 years were completed in fulfillment of the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved in the heart of Cyrus. He made this proclamation. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of his people among you may go up, and may the Lord their God be with them. Principle 2 God's righteousness prevails through his promises. Where are you looking for all the right answers to make the right choices to live the right way? Are you following the world or God? Will you commit to following him today with your whole heart? If you do, you can be certain that he will lead you to his right ways in every life circumstance and decision. In this life, even experts make mistakes, but God never will. Instead of looking to people or following the ways of our world, let's look to and follow God who is holy and perfectly right all the time in every way. With him, 
there are no mistakes. Although Josiah led Judah to spiritual revival, persistent rebellion led the nation to captivity. Please remember that God's righteousness prevails. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we praise you for you are perfectly righteous. We thank you for reminding us to always focus on you. In our daily lives, help us rely on and follow you at all times and in all ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Peace of God be with you all. สวัสดีครับ